Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thanks so much for joining me today. I have another design team project for the Not Too Shabby Shop, and today I'm playing with a really fun stamp set from Concord and Ninth. This one is called Petals and Palettes. It's an older stamp set, but when I saw it in Jamie's shop, I just had to have it. I also picked up the coordinating dies just because it is such a unique set. So this is my stamp set for the month of April. I love these stamps because they are solid images. Solid image stamps are so fun to play with. And in this video, I'm going to show you two different ways that you can add some dimension to your stamped images. So I'm starting out with some stamping. I'm going to stamp out this pretty hydrangea image. I'm going to be using some inks from My Favorite Things. And I have two purples that I'm going to be using to stamp out the hydrangea. I'm going to use the light purple one first. And I'll have all of the names listed in the description below and over at my blog. These are both pigment inks that I'm using, but you can use dye ink or whatever you have. I'm stamping it again, but with the dark ink this time, and I'm just tapping it on the edge. And then I'm going to find a tissue and just kind of soften up the harsh line on this stamp. Just kind of dabbing a little bit of the ink away. And then I'll stamp that out again. And it just adds a little bit of dimension this way. It's a fun technique to try. And then I'm going back over it again with the lighter ink. There, I think that looks so pretty. I'm going to do the same thing with this peony stamp. I'm stamping it out with the darker pink first. I just want to see what it looks like. And then I'm going to move my stamp and stamp with the light ink again. And then I'm going to tap in some of the darker ink around the edges. If these were smaller inks like the cubes or the teardrop inks, it would be a lot easier to do. But using a tissue just to soften the edges or a cloth here really helps out a lot. And I think that looks so pretty. And now for the daisy image. I'm stamping this out with yellow, and it's such a pale yellow that I do have to stamp it a few times to darken it up. I'm not going to tap any color into this one. But I just wanted to show you how that stamps out. I'm using a piece of acetate to protect my white paper. And then I can pick up the stamp with the door of the misty and ink it up. This way, you don't have to clean off your stamps in between your stamping. And now I'm stamping it up with some orange ink. And I'm going to stamp it out again with red, but I do that off camera. And now for the leaves, there are two different leaves in the stamp set. And I'm going to stamp these up several times so I have a lot for my card project. It also comes with a cute, teeny tiny little floral image. And I'm stamping that out several times as well. And now I'm going to clip apart the dies. Some I can bend back and forth and break apart that way. And then I have some metal snips here that I can use for the rest. And these coordinating dies are great because it cuts out all the little details along the edge of the different flowers. I'll tape these into place with some purple tape. That way they won't shift when I run them through my Sizzix Big Shot machine. I don't end up using the palette die for this card, but I am planning another card video using that because it is such a fun die. And here are all of my die cut flowers and leaves. I think they look so cute, but I don't end up using them all on this card project, but I will save them for another project. Next, I'm going to stamp out the wood grain stamps. I'm stamping them onto a piece of Desert Storm cardstock, and I'm using some vintage photo Distress Oxide ink. I'm using my larger Misty to accommodate these stamps, and this way I can just shift the paper 
and I don't have to move the stamps around. Now I can just shift the paper over a little bit and stamp again. I didn't stamp it completely straight, but I think it just adds to the distressed uh, look of this piece. I really love how it turns out. Now I'm going to just flip the paper over for my last stamping. I stamp out each section twice just to get it nice and dark. These stamps would be so fun to stamp out in different colors, and I'm thinking pink because that's my favorite color. I'll have to try that out. I didn't show myself putting these stamps on the door, but they are separate pieces. So you don't have to use both of them, of course. You could just use one as a border along one of your panels. I think that would be cute. I'm going to cut down this panel with a faux stitch to die. This panel will be a little bit smaller than my A2 sized card. And now for adding some dimension to these daisies. I'm coming in with some colored pencils. These are Faber-Castell colored pencils, but of course it doesn't matter which, which kind you use. And I'm using a color a little bit darker than the color of my ink. I'm going in at the base of each petal, just adding some shadows and dimension. It's really fun and easy to do. For the orange daisy, I'm using a warm brown colored pencil. For each flower, I'm just using one pencil each, except on the centers. I come in with some different colors on the centers of these flowers. Like here, I'm adding a little bit of yellow to the center. For my red flower, I'm adding some Payne's gray. I could have come in with a really deep red, but I wanted to try out the gray, and I really love the result of this. I'm also going to add dimension to the leaves. And I'm coming in with two different colored pencils for this and the stems, which I stamped off camera and fussy cut out. This was really fun to do, and it sure adds a lot of interest and dimension to these flowers. They looked kind of flat before. Of course, any chance I get, I love to pull out my colored pencils. And now to put this card together. I'm going to stamp out the thanks sentiment, and I love how bold and big this stamp is. I'm using some VersaFine Claire ink, and this is called Fallen Leaves. It's a really dark brown. It's almost black. This is one of my favorite inks. And then I'm going to stamp the sentiment that says a bunch, and I'm going to stamp it on a piece of dark brown cardstock. I treated it with my anti-static powder bag first, and now I can use my embossing ink to stamp that up a few times. I'll pour over some white embossing powder. This is called alabaster white, and melt that with my heat tool. And I did allow it to heat up for a minute before I brought it to the cardstock. I'm cutting out this sentiment with a fishtail die that I found in my stash. I'm just using my desktop die cutting machine to cut this out quickly. I just keep this right on my desk. It's so handy. I love this little tool. And I'm going to put some foam pieces behind this sentiment. I just love how the white embossing powder looks on this dark brown cardstock. I am going to trim down this sentiment a little bit, but I'm not going to add it quite yet to my panel. First, I'm going to start adhering down my flowers. I'll glue on the stems first. Some of these flowers I'm going to pop up with foam pieces as well. And then one I'm actually going to adhere down flat onto the card. But I'm just using a little bit of liquid glue to adhere these stems on. I just love how these flowers look against this faux wood grain panel. So much fun. I'm trying to adhere these so they don't cover my thanks sentiment. I'm trying to get my stems to meet up because I am going to tie a bow around them. I put some foam tape behind this last flower. It's going to hang off the edge of this panel just a little bit, but that's all right because this is a little bit smaller than my card base. So I won't have to trim any of it off. I have some very thin brown twine. 
And I'm going to wrap this around my stems a few times. To get it to show up really nicely, I do have to wrap it around a few times just because it is such thin twine. But I like this twine because it goes through the mail easily. I'll put a glue dot behind my stems and the twine just to make sure it stays in place. And now I can tie my bow. And this is where my camera stopped and I didn't realize it, so I kept working on my card. I also attached the leaves to the stems and add my second sentiment underneath the thanks. My household is so busy lately that I forget things like pressing the on button. But I'm glad I was nearly done with this card. I do add some gold stickles just to the centers of the flowers. This adds some beautiful sparkle. And that's all there is to this card. I had so much fun putting this one together. I hope you enjoyed the video. I have a 10% off coupon code for you at the Not Too Shabby Shop. I'll have that in the description below. This stamp and die set are available over at the Not Too Shabby Shop if you're interested in checking that out. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon with another card video. Bye!